Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Everyone on YouTube, thanks for coming out. I apologize for last week, I wasn't able to do a video. Uh, I was actually in the path of Hurricane Zeta and lost my power for a couple days. Uh, so it just wasn't priority at the time, but I'm so happy to be back this week talking about Tabby. Uh, Tabby was an easy box put out there by user Egress on Hack the Box. It's relatively simple with some tricks, mostly related to Tomcat, which you can kind of determine from the the icon for this box. There will be some techniques that we'll go over, including local file inclusions that we were able to find on one website. We're gonna pivot back over to the other website, which is the Tomcat Manager. And we'll use something that I've seen in the past a little bit differently, but it'll be the Tomcat upload of a war file in order to get remote code execution. That'll get us our foothold. We'll play around a few things, find some files uh, and find some passwords and I'll show you how to do that using fcrack zip and then with those passwords there'll be some password reuse which will get us to our first user following that I'll use linpeas but it's pretty simple lxd is a group in Linux that allows you to use containerized Linux process and we'll use that for a privilege escalation so that is I wouldn't say fairly common, but it's definitely easy and it's out there. So these are some really cool techniques and I'm so happy to be here sharing it with you guys again. I start SEC 560 with SANS in a couple hours, so we need to get this started. So as always, we're gonna start with an end map. Feels like being a broken record sometimes, but it's, it's what you do when you're doing pen testing. So same techniques over and over again get your rhythm get your habits so we're going to end map 10 10 10 194 for this box tabby we'll go ahead and let that run you've got port 22 port 80 and port 8080 i'm going to come back in and i'm going to do those ports uh, i'm going to skip 22 because i know what that is but we'll do 8080 we'll do scripts and versions versions and scripts um, I'll make this window a little bit bigger just to start with so we can take a look at what comes back. So as that runs, we know we've got 80, we've got 80, 80. So let's try and take a look at some of what might be out there. All right, you see it before I even got there, there's Apache 2441. Uh, the title of that site is Mega Hosting. Then you've got Tomcat on 8080, which comes back Tomcat. So let's take a look at what we've got. So on the normal port 80, we're going to come up with Mega Hosting. It's a website called megahosting.htb. It's got a lot of information if they were going to run a hosting website. All these links are kind of dead. There's nothing really going on. We'll come across the top. It is home. And these are all hashtagged out. Infrastructure. It's just taking a hashtag infrastructure. You go to news and it redirects you to megahosting.htb. So one of the early things you gotta do is add that. So sudo nano Etsy hosts. I've been using a different keyboard all week, so I'm a little bit different. 10, 10, 10, 194, and it's megahosting.htb. I'm back, I didn't like my space there. Save that, so we'll come back over and refresh. There we go, so when we refresh at that time, we apologize to all our customers for a previous data breach. We have changed the site to remove this tool, have invested heavily in more secure servers. Come up here, you got mega hosting, HTTP, news.php, and then it's got a file statement. So this is one of those fun things that you can do where you can try some local file inclusion. Do Etsy password. Okay, nothing comes back. Not to say that it wasn't there, it just maybe that's not where that file is. So let's do uh, news.php. Have it call itself. Well, it still didn't come back. That's okay. Um, one of my tools that I like to use for this one is dot dot poem. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I do not have dot dot pwn on this one, so we'll just go cd opt and we'll try and go out and find it. Um, I 
It's a fun little directory fuzzer. Uh, it's it's super basic. You can use a lot of different fuzzers. This one I find to be just simple, um, and it's very basic. All it's looking for is dot dot slashes and other variants of those commands in different Unicode, whatever it is, and it'll run through a bunch of different versions to try and see if it can find files. And you can specify the operating system. You can specify what files you're looking for. By default, it does look for Etsy password, and on Windows, it looks for some other files. So I'll just do this, sudo git clone, and we'll take a look at it. So let's do dot, 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 poem. Let's make it bigger for you. All right, so like I said, dot, dot, poem. And it gives you the option, you have to specify what kind of module you're using because you can do FTP uh, fuzzing as well. Like I said, there's operating system specifics. So you can skip some of that stuff. You can go to the depth of traversal. It's gonna stop at six. Um, again, Etsy mo uh, message of the day. It'll look for Etsy password. It'll look for web config, things like that. You can specify all these things, super cool, but it, it can be very basic if you want it to be basic. So with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and do a dot dot phone, and then we're gonna do for method, I'm gonna do an HTTP URL, and that's gonna allow us to do the URL search. So I'll do a U, um, and then let's bounce back over here and let's copy this, paste that in. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna say traversal. So that kind of gets us our, our fuzzing side of the house. And then it's gonna ask for a K. So I'll just go ahead and run it and show you. So it's gonna say, you need to match a pattern string. So it even says here in the K, um, if you're doing Etsy password, a good one is just basic root colon, which allows you to flag that. So we'll go ahead and just do that. So K and then root colon. And when we run that, It'll ask us to run it, hit enter, and it'll start doing it. And you can see mega hosting, and there it already starts to see them. So, right there, it is three, four, five dot dot slashes deep. So, we can keep running this, it's doing a 2F replacement that works as well. But we found that there is a directory traversal and it's finding this. So, if I say open this link, and it comes back over here and we for sure we were able to do directory traversal we were able to do a local file inclusion so we've got some information so here's root run 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 i like to start at the bottom so running from the back we have a user called ash it's our 1000 user his name is clive his home is home slash ash so that we've got MySQL, we've got a user called Tomcat, which is something we're gonna take a look at in a minute. There's the user LXD. So we, we have a username that we need to keep in mind, which is Ash. But we were able to find that and we can go down the road and use this to find all kinds of information. But we don't know what we're looking for quite yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And we're going to go to 10, 10, 10, 194, 80, 80. So it says, hey, it works. If you're seeing this, it means you have set up Tomcat successfully. So we know this is running Tomcat. It's default page. It can be found in the law. So here we've got where the root location is for that file. Tomcat veterans might be pleased to learn that this system instance of Tomcat, so that Catalina home is here and Catalina base is here. So there's some things that we could do that are gonna kind of reference Catalina Home, Catalina Base. We now know where to start from, especially in the user directory. Um, we're doing local file inclusion. We kind of know here's a good place to start. Uh, and then it tells you to kind of look at these things, these documents. Uh, so it says for security reason, using the web manager or the, the manager web app is restricted to users with role manager GUI. The host manager web app is restricted to user with role admin GUI. Users are defined in this file. Okay. Let's take a look at that file. We can just come back over here, paste it right in, right? Hmm. 
that file does not exist. It's kind of strange. Tomcat users XML. We'll just put it in here. So it says, you know, this should be located by default in Catalina Home config Tomcat users.xml. Okay. So by going to this page, we know this is Catalina Home. So we'll copy this. And then it's going to be conf and then uh, Tomcat users XML. Wow. Hey, when it does that. So it's still not in that location. And it said it was in Catalina Home. And this is Catalina Home. We can try Catalina Base, which is var lib Tomcat. Is that right? User share, so var lib. Okay. Did it to me again. Like it doesn't even think I know what I want to ask for. So it's not being found there. So let's see, is there anywhere else it could be? Uh, it's very common that it's looking for that. Tomcat dash. So it did say we we're using Tomcat 9. Now let's go ahead and go to the manager app how to. So some of the information. Tomcat users. And it says the same thing. It should be, oh, this one says Catalina base. So it does say it should be in, yeah, in var lib Tomcat based on this bar lib tomcat9 slash bar lib tomcat9 slash conf tomcat dash users xml such a bummer all right so that's kind of frustrating but let's go ahead and take a look at what it's saying here so user share Tomcat 9, um, we'll go ahead and do uh, user share Tomcat 9, Tomcat users XML. And I don't want to file. Oh. Sometimes I get really frustrated with this browser. Go ahead and copy that. Come over here, put a slash, paste this in the beginning. That way it does a Google search instead. Um, so if you start looking here, it's gonna say that if you look at the text interface, the Debian file path inclusion, it's actually gonna go user share Tomcat 9, Tomcat users XML. So, we can try that one. And just back it up to right there. User share Tomcat 9, Etsy Tomcat users XML. All right, let's take a look. Ah, well, when you look at the source code. So we did have it. So every now and then I was looking at source code, but you gotta look at it all the time. And sure enough, we've got 
these different roles, admin GUI, manager script, and then you've got username Tomcat with a password. It says they have admin GUI and they have manager script. So this is a great password for us to keep. So a little bit of elite speak super or a secure password, one, two, three, exclamation point. So let's try and go to the manager. And here, once installed, you can access the, web man the manager web app. And we will say Tomcat. Go ahead and paste this password in. All right, so it brings us to this page. It's a 403. Uh, by default, the manager is only accessible from a browser running on the same machine as Tomcat. So we do have a limitation where we're just not gonna be able to use this. Uh, so for more information, you can look at the manager app, how to. And this is all hosted locally, which is kind of cool. Um, so it kind of steps you through that this is your user-friendly HTML interface. Um, there's also commands for a manager slash text, and then it takes command and parameters. So we know that we're authorized and we have the credentials. There's something I've seen on several other boxes that we're gonna try and attempt here, which is to, just to deploy uh, a new war. So you can Upload a war to this, and you're going to do it through curl. And since we have credentials, it should be able to go, even though we don't have access to the HTML side of the house, we're not able to go load the page. Uh, we should be able to upload a war. So now that this is clear, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Um, and I'll take us back to HTB. I'm going to make a directory for tabby. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and do, we'll build an MSF Venom and try that authenticated RC. So uh, MSF Venom, we're going to, you're gonna you're gonna need to specify so knowing that it's a tomcat does their wars they're all java so we'll go ahead and just use a java uh, reverse shell uh, shell reverse tcp there we go um, let's say l host is my ip so today it is 14.17 I'm going to set the L port to uh, 7777. Why? Why not? We're going to tell it that we want it saved in the WAR format. And then you can pipe it or you can uh, do an output. I'll just do a pipe here. So I'm going to say poem.war. Now let's call it parity. So we're going to build this. We're going to get ourselves a little reverse shell. Let's see if we can find that command for uploading. So malicious uh, Tomcat war upload. And no bytes got a nice how to on this one. So you'll see this on C CTS now and then. And it comes up fairly frequently. I, I did look through this ahead of time, and so there's ways that you would check passwords, things like that. But we've already verified the password by doing our login directly at the application. Um, and it has the opportunity and the ability to do a Tomcat upload. If you really dig into this one, and here they show it, but they kind of cut it off. Um, the URI that they're gonna to use to access the manager app is that HTML upload, which we have already shown we don't have permission to access, but you could use the slash text. So in this case, we're gonna to have to do it manually by saying slash text and uploading it on curl. So um, while the Metasploit exploit does work, it doesn't work in this case. You could try and adapt it, try and rewrite it. But in this case, we're just gonna go 
down towards the bottom and then there's the discussion about this war back door and so that's where you get in this here's the code for how to do the back door this tells you how to upload it but we know we can't access the HTML and that's where you can come down Aww. so this one doesn't seem to have it So this one doesn't have a curl. Let's see if anybody else has curl. No. Say curl. All right. So this GitHub might have it. So curl, upload file. Here's the application. Here is how to undeploy it, but we're not so worried about undeploy um, and then here's the login information so that looks pretty close to what I got so let's go back to this window and I'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit so we can well, let's just copy this We know that we call this one parity at war. So let's just go ahead and type that in parity. Parity at war. Okay, there we go. So we're going to Tomcat, but we're going to need the password that we found already. So I'll paste it in there. We're not doing a logo host, we're going to do it at 1010. 10.194. This one will not deploy because you got to specify text deploy. Uh, and then we'll give it a path. So in this case, we're going to call it parity. So this will deploy it from the root on 8080 as parity. All right. So curl, upload this file. Did not like that. So that is a that is an issue with how it's going to process the password. So we'll go ahead and add a single quote because it doesn't know how to handle that exclamation point. And then we'll just copy the rest in. Wow. So we'll go ahead and get rid of the double quotes completely. Single quote, single quote, 10, 10, 10, 1, 8, 4. All right, so just don't use double quotes. That was kind of dumb. All right, so deployed application at context path parity. So we said in this that we we're going to have an L port of 777. So let's clear this up. NC, NDLP, 777 let it sit there now we come back over here we can go all right we'll do it from here there's so many windows open but if I say parity and I visit that nothing happens but if you come back over here you're gonna see we have a connection and I can just say ID and we're running as Tomcat so as Tomcat um, we'll say which Python Nope. Which Python 3? Oops. And that's what we're running. So we'll just do a Python 3. We'll run some code. Import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash. Everything looks good. Now we've got Tomcat at Tabby. All right. So we've done all that, and now we've got our foothold. So if I do a cat Etsy password, we get it. We can see Tomcat's here. Tomcat's home directory is opt Tomcat. So there's really not going to be anything there. But if I say cd this, ls, lsi, pwd, there's, there's nothing in here. 
this user doesn't really exist in the, in the real world sense, but we'll go CD bar dub dub dub. So there's the HTML, so CD HTML ls li. So here's where you see that index PHP that loads and there's a readme and then there's news. So news, so this is definitely the port 80 files, not so much Tomcat's uh, web manager, but this is your port 80. Um, and then you see that user ash again, and then there's files in here for ash. So let's CD files. And we're gonna see there's some revoked certs. There's an archive, there's a statement. So cat statement. Uh, we apologize for customers, previous data breach. So this is kind of that one page that we went to, but there's nothing really hiding in this one. It's just the statement that fits inside of that, that window when you run the news. I can get into the revoke certs, but the real fun one here, as always, you want to look for those indicators. This is owned by Ash. It's readable by everyone, but it's owned by Ash. So that's the file I want to get into. 1616 underscore backup.zip. Uh, I see that it's that. Um, Let's go ahead and take this back to our computer. And so one of the techniques I want to talk about right now is just how to netcat a file back. It's a pretty basic technique, uh, but if you're not super familiar with it, it can be kind of annoying. Um, so we're going to push it from this side and we're going to listen on the other side. So let's go ahead and open a new tab. And we're already sitting in tabby, so I'll just do NC LP. And I'm going to say 9998. Um, and actually, I take that back. We're going to do that, but we're going to type it into a file called backup.zip. And it's going to hang. So 9998, we'll come back over here and we will say nc 101014.17. We're going to say we're going to do it on 9998 and we're going to pipe into it this file. So the 161620 backup.zip. So it's pushing the information over, 9998. Not really seeing it, but if I come in here, I'm gonna see that there is a backup.zip. If I do a file backup.zip, you see that the archive is there, it's, it's good. So if I do an unzip, backup.zip, it's gonna be asking for a password. We don't know the password. Let's see what happens when we do this. CD dip the dub. So CD HTML, CD files. There's nothing in there. So it's just not able to dump this because it's got a password. So whenever you see a password on a file, on a zip file, always think F cracks it. So we'll go ahead and back this up a little bit. I'm gonna say RMRF to uh, the var, get rid of everything that was in there because we're gonna try and clean it up a little bit. So F cracks it. So it says you need to specify the file. So F cracks zip, and then we're gonna say backup but the challenge with that one is you need to give fcrackzip a file name for the word list. So if I say fcrackzip uh, tag h, so this is how you'd normally do it. It's going to try and brute force it. That's just crazy. So you do want to give it a file to work with, but this. This one is not very advanced. It's not really helping us out here. We are gonna go through a little bit of this. So F crack zip, we do not get, let's go ahead and do a man F crack zip. All right, 
So we'll go through and see a little bit more. Um, there's a few more options here. Um, so you want to try to decompress the file first by calling unzip and this weeds out false positive. So it tries to unzip it. If it doesn't unzip, then it knows it's not a password that even though it might think it is, if you try to decompress it first, it will say, oh, no, no, my bad. So you always want to try dash u. Um, we do want to do a dictionary attack. So this is just part of using a word list. So we're going to give it a word list. And I'm going to use rock you. Pretty basic when you're doing these. It doesn't always work in the real world, but that's what we're going to use here. And then set initial starting password for brute searching to string or use the file with the name string to supply passwords for dictionary. Okay, so we're gonna provide it the password file here. So I'll go ahead and we're gonna say fcrackzip. We're gonna say that u to try and decompress it. D for dictionary, P for a file. And we're gonna give it user share word list rock u. And then we're gonna say backup. So found it right away, super easy. It is on the list, it's pretty early on the list. Admin at IT. So we've got a password. That was something interesting that we got from Ash. And honestly, there's a lot of ways to poke around, keep poking around, but the easiest way is just try and say Sue Ash. And by Sue Ash, if we say admin at IT, there's password reviews. So it's pretty common to see that. Yeah, pretty easy, but now we're sitting at Ash, which is great. Let's see, uh, CD to his home directory. Hey, there's user text, cat user dot text. Boom, got text, good job. So that one was a little bit funky with the foothold. Uh, I, I definitely shortcutted a lot of problems that I ran into just by saying, hey, this won't work. But we're gonna try and go after root, root, is a little bit more cryptic, or at least it was to me going into this one, but whenever I try to escalate to root, I always wanna to go to dev shm. I'm gonna come back over to this window. I'm gonna say cd var, var www.html, and then I'm gonna start up my, my server. So it's actually gonna be sudo python3mhtp.server. And I'm gonna run it on 80. So we're running there. So now I can do a which w get. Make sure I got it. So I do. So w get 10, 10, 14, not 17. And I'm gonna say, give me that lin peas. Shamad plus x lin peas. I'll just say star. They're gonna run lin star. All right. So if you've ever seen a video from me, I like to really hit it up right from the start. Look for the red yellows, 99%, that's a privilege escalation vector. Red, take a look at it. Blue, light, cyan, green, these are things you wanna take a look at. Before I even get past the first page, I've already got a yellow highlight here for LXD. So LXD, what is that? All right. I'm just gonna jump in and start searching while this runs. So we're gonna say LXD privilege escalation. And this hacking articles.im, best article on it, best article I've seen. Um, Raj Shandell did a great job of explaining this, but LXD is, it's kind of similar to a Docker environment. They are LX containers and the LXD is the daemon. So you're gonna run the daemon to run those dockers or excuse me, those containers, uh, that lightweight virtualization. So you're gonna be able to similar, like it says there, similar to change root to root, you're gonna be able to kind of start a miniature virtualized instance and then assign it permissions and um, a, a root directory essentially. So by using those containers, you're gonna kind of just drop everything inside. There's a couple different ways that it's explained in this, um, if you're gonna try and run containers. But if you're gonna try and do privilege escalation and actually abuse it, you need a great write up here. Same thing you saw here, if you do an ID, you're gonna see they're part of LXD. So on the attacker machine, you need to build Alpine, transfer it to the machine, and we're gonna transfer, transfer it 
through wget it's easier way to pull it but you can transfer it through that netcat methodology i explained earlier you're going to download it to the, the box you're going to import it in you're going to mount it you're going to initialize it and then mount it and all the commands are right here really it's 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 pretty good so um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually on the attacker box so we'll go to this uh yeah we'll do it from this one so we'll just close this and we'll say cd hdb tabby so at this point we're going to get clone that image we're going to go into that directory we'll do a sudo build alpine and it's going to put all that together um, and at this point you can go two different ways you can do a upload uh well i think that you can do it two different ways in terms of just doing a, a website download or you can try and do that netcat transfer that we did before we're going to go ahead and just do a transfer through wget so that's up we've already killed that so let's do our server from here um, and before we do that i just want to do an ls that way i can get this file name we're going to copy this file name and we're going to do that server i'll come back over here and i'm going to say wget 101014 oof 10 10 14 17 and we'll paste that file in there and we got it. All right, so it's sitting in that directory. Uh, next thing it tells us to do, so it tells us to transfer it, wget lxc image list. So lxc image list. And there's nothing out there because nothing's been loaded. So we'll go ahead and start doing our loads. And that's part of it is just make sure that it's, nothing is loaded. Um, this window is really funky, so the best way to do it is this. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, paste that in, and I'm going to call my image parity. And it's super important that you do this part. If you don't do this, you will not get root permissions. You'll actually not be able to use the container after you exploit it. Uh, the way that we need to. In order to read root, you got to be root. So we're going to say, give me the privilege. So creating parity, parity not found. We did not load this properly. So we forgot to do this image import. So I'm going to pop this out. And that's where we're going to name the alias. Paste it there, and the alias is going to be parity. All right. So that's just a difference in name. All right. Little issues, nothing major. So we're going to do a dot slash, and then we're going to grab this file name. That's the file that we created. And then I can do an alias parity. All right. Now that it's in there, now I should be able to say initialize my image called parity with true security privileged. Okay, LXC image list. LXC init parity. Creating the instance no storage pool found. My image. Should have done this like that. Error not found. So let's go back to this main and just make sure we hit everything. So we went ahead and we built it. We had some stupid little errors, but it shouldn't have been too much of an issue. We transferred the file over. We've got the file. Uh, we decided to import it with the alias of parity. And when we do the image list, I see it and it says parity here. So it should be this message right here so it should be lxc init my image the name of my image c security privilege true lxc init my image parity tax c privilege true i've 
try to do that. So if I try to come in here and say add parity, so we'll copy this. Oops, not twice. And we'll say parity and give it this information. Error not found. LXC start um, parity. So I can't do any of this. So let's go ahead and just try and run. I hate doing this, but we'll run the commands exactly how they're given with the only difference being that we're going to import our own, our personal file. So I'm going to say copy this, import the image. The image is going to be this one right here. And we're going to alias it as my image. Image with same fingerprint exists. Let's try and just do an LXC image delete uh, parity. Okay, so if we do LXC image list, nothing's in there. So let's try this again. So I'm just running it the same way it was ran on the website. So it said bring in this image. We do an image list. Pull it right here, image list. We see that my image is in here. My image is in here. Now we can start using these commands and we will just run them the way they are as ignite. I don't know why it's giving me trouble tonight. So same problem, no storage pool found. To be honest, I do know what this is now, and this is an issue with the way that the write-up was written. So you actually have to come back up here, and because we kind of skipped through his original setup, um, one of the things that we missed was initializing the daemon. So the daemon's not there. So let's try an LXD. There's a knit, right? A knit. And one of the things you'll see that you highlight is make sure to mark this directory. All right. So we'll go through, take the default, take the default. And then here we're gonna say, I wanna use dir. And then you just take all the defaults. Now the daemon should be running and we should have a storage pool. So that's part of the issue that we're running to is we don't have a storage pool. So if I come in here and I initialize this, work fine, all right, so. My apologies on that one. So we've done that function. Now we need to mount the disk source with a path of root, mount root, is where we're gonna put it. So I'll paste that in here. Device, my device added to ignite. We're gonna start ignite. And then we're gonna execute this. And ta-da, we have what looks like a root shell. So a little wonky, this one's a tricky one. And then we'll just go in and if I say, where are we? So UWD, we're in root. If I say LSLA, there's a history there, but there, we're not really in root because we mounted it into mount root. So CD mount root. And I look in there and that is the whole directory structure that we had before. So at this point, if I go into root from there, I'm actually in mount root root. And with mount root root, if I do an ls lia, I'm gonna see everything I would normally see. I'm gonna say cat root.txt. And there is our root. Um, if we go ahead and we go into SSH, there is an IDR say, an IDRA key pub. So we want to steal the private key. I'm going to say cat id underscore rsa. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Just out of frustration for this box, I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to copy this, and we'll come over here. So we'll back out of this directory, and then we'll nano id rsa. 
sure to chmod this to uh, 0, 0600. And then we will try to SSH root at 10, 10, 10, 194 using not that, but the one here, IDR say. And we're sitting at root tabby. So just because it pissed me off, I went ahead and went the extra step and pulled their SSH key. Where am I at? I am in the same, but this is not, this is no longer inside the container. This is the actual total box. We're just SSH, SSH in. So sometimes when you can put something into a container, mount a structure into the container, and you pull things like an SSH key, you're able to exploit that to break back out of that container. Because in the container, there's only so much we could do. Uh, anything you did didn't necessarily apply to the files that were live on the system. Now we're fully live on the system, able to do everything we need to do. If I cat root that text, you're gonna see it's A4EF ending with 4044. And we'll go back over here. A4EF ending in 4044. So it's the same information. Um, if I come over here and I say touch parity, tough, tough, touch parity, I say LSLA, you're going to see that there's a file called parity here. If I go back over here, LSLA, actually I got to back out of here. So CD back out. LSLA, I do see the parity file. From here, if I say touch parity 2, LSLIA, we do have parity 2, and we have parity 2. So you can kind of go back and forth. You're not completely independent inside of that container, but it's just a really wonky way of doing business. If you're able to pull that SSH key, go pull that SSH key, drop into the main part of the box. Uh, this one had a few intricacies that kind of got annoying, but I'm glad that I was able to do this this week uh, after last week just being without power. Uh, that was a real bummer. I've got, oh, looking at the clock, about three hours before I start my SEC 560 class. By the time you guys are watching this, I'll already be through day one. I've already perused the material. Sans puts together a great class. If you're looking for some cool pen testing tricks, they're in there. Within the limitations of my agreements with Sans, I'm going to try and share some of those tricks with you. But if you'd like to hear more about uh, their moderator, their facilitator training courses that allow you to do work study, uh, I will gladly put a video out there if anybody's interested. I've done one facilitator course, one moderator course, and I'm actually one of their virtual teaching assistants. I've been doing that for a little while. Look forward to seeing that class and seeing what I can share with you guys on the back end. Big shout out to Egress on this box. Pretty easy box, but little tweaks here and there made it a challenge, especially with the, the inability to use that HTML uh, web app view, because uh, that's definitely been something I've done in the past, but trying to upload it through a curl this time was a great technique. So if there's anything else you guys would like to see, please let me know in the comments below. My contact information is right there. Please subscribe. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Follow me for future videos. I so look forward to seeing you guys next week. Mm -hmm.